All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create these gears in the MO2 plugin for Apple Motion. The technique here, I have not heard a lot of people talk about this, but it is a fantastic way to get these gears into MO2. And that technique is using an icon font. Yes, these gears are actually created with a font. It is a font that I have created, and this is in my free assets. If you head over to www.bcraftmath.com store, scroll on down and look for the free assets and you can actually get this icon font. Now this image will be included with the free assets as well. And just to kind of give you an idea, A10, the letter A on your keyboard will bring up this 10 tooth or 10 teeth gear. This one right here, V60, this has 60 teeth and it will be the letter V for this icon font. And it's important to know how many teeth we have for each gear. So when we go and do some math right here in a minute, and what do I mean by math? I mean, look at this video here. All of these gears, the teeth, there, 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 they are actually locking together, so to speak. And we have to do a little bit of math to get that animation to work correctly and really sell that animation. So how did I create the teeth? Uh, I don't really remember. I made that icon font years ago, actually, for an app called KOWP. It's an app for Android devices where it lets you customize your wallpaper. A good chunk of my YouTube channel is devoted to that. But in Affinity Designer, we can do something pretty similar. So with Affinity Designer, it's 50 bucks, one-time price. Uh, we can take this little gear tool here and we can drag out a gear. We can adjust the holes. You can adjust the teeth size, inner radius, the number of teeth. And yeah, I mean, tons of ways to customize this. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to convert this to a curve. So here's the cog, a gear. If I click on convert to curves, this is now going to be a vector. Now I'm just going to drag in a few more up here and I'm going to show you how we create this icon font. All right, so I have three gears here, and I'm just going to go ahead and make all of these a solid black. We don't need any edge color there, but I'm going to take the fill color and make all of these black. Now, obviously, these gears will not look good when they're locked together like the one in the animation. You want to make sure all of your teeth are somewhat of the same shape and size. But I want to show you real quick how we can export this and create an icon font. So in Affinity Designer, I'm going to go to the Export Persona. I'm going to go over to my Layers. And for all three of these guys, I'm going to create a slice. Now that quickly puts a box around each one of these gears. I'm going to come over to my Slices. And for this preset here, I want to make sure I pick SVG and, and this option right here. SVG for Export is just fine. Now, I don't want to export my background. I just want to export these three slices, so to speak. These are our gears. I'm going to go ahead and name these. I'm going to name one of them A, B, and then this gear right here. I'm going to name it C. So we have A, B, C. Now, all of these are pretty much the same size. It's okay if they're not. Obviously, if we're going to have more teeth and all that. But let's go ahead and export these. I just have a folder on my desktop called Gear Tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and export. And now, one place we can go and create these icon fonts is icomoon.io. This is the actual landing page here, but go on over to the icomoon app and we can import some icons. Head into that folder. Let's go ahead and highlight all three of those and import them. And there are those three gears. Now, there's tons of free ones up here too, icon fonts, that is. I'm going to go ahead and click on that disk there. I'm going to click on all three of these. And let's get this key right here. Why not? So we have five pieces in our selection. Let's go to generate font. Make sure you have this U plus, the show code selected. And what we want to do for each one of these is we want to give it a letter or number or anything that will represent the keystroke for our font. So A gear, I'm going to use an A. B gear, I'm going to use a B. C gear, C, this floppy disk. Uh, let's use F, why not? And this key, let's use K. These will represent the keystrokes on our keyboard for this font. Click on Preferences now. Let's give this font a name. 
And what we're probably going to notice right here in a minute when we import this into MO2, that A is actually probably going to be this uh, cog, this gear right here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to name this font A, B, C, F, K at the end of it as well. So what we're going to see right here towards the end of the font when we load this up, we're probably going to see some gears and some floppy disk and a key as well. Now all this other junk, I didn't really do anything here, but you can you know mess around with it if you want. Closing out of that, let's download the font. And when you download it, it will be in a zip file. So let's go ahead and unzip it. And inside of here, what we want to grab in the fonts folder, we want to grab this TTF and actually install this font onto our computer, our MacBook. And to do that, load up the font book app. Let's go to plus. I'm going to head to that folder on my desktop where I extracted that file. Head on over to fonts and let's use that TTF. And as you can see, we do have the A, B, C, the floppy disk was F, and the key was K. Let's open that up. And there it is installed onto our computer. Now, if you had Motion loaded up, close it completely down and reopen it up. So I've loaded up Motion, and now bear in mind, this font that's installed on your computer now, this can be used in any application where you use a font. Word processing, spreadsheets, or in this case, Motion Graphics. You will follow those same steps to install the font from my free assets, the Gears by CraftMath font. Let's go ahead and load up MO2. Over in the inspector, let's go ahead and add some text. And for this text, let's scroll on down for the font. And there's our font. Now let's go ahead and type in those letters just to see them all. It was A, B, C, a floppy disk, and a key. Boom, check it out. It's pretty sweet, right? Let's reset the camera, zoom on out, and there are our pieces. Now, just like with any text, you can adjust the uh, various parameters down here. The tracking, how much extrusion do you want? Heck, we can even mess around with the bevel. But yeah, these icon fonts are pretty cool. Easy ways to get three-dimensional objects into MO2. Now for the next part of the tutorial comes the math. How do we get these gears to rotate in unison and really sell that look of gears actually rotating together? To do that, I'm going to load up the Gears by Craft Math font. I'm going to delete those letters that I have in there. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and reset the parameter to get all those bevels and default settings back. So I will have to go back and select that Gears by Craft Math font. And let's start with the letter A. Let me activate the control in MO2 and let's frame in that gear. Now the letter A has 10 teeth on it. Now this particular project, I have it right around, what, 20 seconds? That doesn't really matter, but over the course of this 20 seconds here, how many rotations do we want this 10 tooth, 10 teeth gear to rotate? I'm going to rotate it six times. This is important to understand now. So six times 360 degrees is 2,160. Now what we want to do is we want to rotate this gear 2,160 degrees, which is going to be six rotations. Now before we do that, let's set our anchor point for this gear to the center. Now we can see it's dead center. And now if I start rotating on my Z, you can see that it's rotating perfectly around the center of that gear. So let's start at zero. Add a keyframe and let's go to the end of our project and I'm going to do 2160. Let me head into my keyframe editor and let's make sure we have the interpolation set to linear, which we do. And if we give this a play, it's going to rotate 2160 degrees over the course of this project. Now I'm not going to play that all the way through, but I assure you it's going to be six full rotations. Now, since we have 10 teeth on this gear and it's rotating six times, if you take 10 times 6, you get 60 teeth. That's important to understand. I'm going to come in here and grab a 30 tooth gear. For example, let's get this G30 right here. And a quick way we can uh, get that gear up here real quick, let's just duplicate that gear. I'm going to rename this first one A because that was my A gear. And also let's give it an A10 to remind ourselves how many teeth that gear had. This one, I already forgot what letter, I think we said G, and it has 30 teeth. So let's go into that item. Let's scroll on down, we still have the same font. Let's type in the letter G, and now we have our 30 tooth gear up here. Now what we need to do is set the center of this gear. 
And let's move this gear over and let's line up our teeth. Let's make sure we're at the beginning of our project, which we are. Now the extrusion is crazy on this one. So uh, let's knock this extrusion down to maybe 0.5. I'm going to come to that A gear as well and knock that extrusion down as well, 0.5. And I know I'm using my active camera, which is fine, but we're just going to move on over and we're going to match up these two gears together. That extrusion could be even smaller actually, but it's all right. So let's take that gear and let's kind of slide it in. I'm going to click on my wrench just to get a better view. And that looks all right. So we have this tooth here interlocking with those two. Now, back to the gear A. Remember we said we had it doing six full rotations and 10 times six is 60 teeth. Well, since we have 30 teeth on this G gear, we need to technically go through 60 teeth. And to do that for a 30 tooth gear, you need to do two full rotations. Not only that, we have to go in the opposite direction of what we have this first gear doing. So since I duplicated this gear, right now that gear is going to be rotating the same exact thing as this 10 tooth gear. We don't want that. Let's go over here to the end where we have 2,160 degrees. We want to do two full rotations. That's going to be 720. And notice I am using a negative because I want to go in the opposite direction. Let's apply that. Let's make sure our interpolation is set to linear. And let's give this a play and see if it looks right. That looks perfect. So again, this one's doing six full rotations for a total of 60 teeth. Since this gear has 30 teeth, it's going to do two full rotations to go through those 60 teeth as well. And if you do the math correctly, you can see that it does work perfectly. And just make sure your interpolation is set to linear. Now, obviously we wanna come in here and add some materials to these. Let's check out old chrome. Not bad. With the diamond, looks even better. And to make sure we understand this, let's add one more gear up here. So I'm gonna duplicate that 10 gear again, the A10. And let's go for a 60 tooth gear this time. How about U? This has 60 teeth on it. So I'm gonna rename that U60. I'm gonna open that item up. Head on down, change my letter to a U. There's our 60 tooth gear. Make sure you set the anchor point to center. And now we can start moving this guy. But I'm going to go back to the beginning of my project. Let's line this up with that 30 tooth gear. Move my camera on over. Cut my wrench back on too. That's not too bad. So let's bear in mind, again from the beginning, this 10 tooth was rotating six times for a total of 60 teeth. That's gonna make this 30 tooth gear rotate two full rotations for a total of 60 teeth. And since this gear here has 60 teeth, we only need to do one full rotation and we want to go in the opposite direction of this 30 gear. So let's come up to our keyframes. I'm gonna to go to the end of the project. And again, this is the 2160 because I copied it from this guy. We want to go in the same direction because we have positive, negative, this one needs to go positive. And we said one full rotation for a total of 360 degrees. Let's give this a play. And now everything should be going in unison. Six full rotations, two rotations, one rotation. And don't skip out on the math here. I mean, really making those gears appear to link together is what really sells this in my opinion. A few more things to note too. If you start putting gears on a shaft and those gears have a different number of teeth, for example, at the very beginning of this video here, that shaft, I have a 10 tooth, and I don't know what the heck that one is, but it, that's going to affect the math as well. You have to bear in mind how many teeth each gear has and how many rotations it's doing. A little bit of multiplying will take care of that, a little bit of division. We're not doing calculus here. But uh, yeah, there you have it, uh, an icon font. Pretty crazy, right? Create your vectors and affinity designer or whatever uh, graphics application you have using that IcoMoon app, using those free ones they have up there. Create your own icon font. Install that using the Fontbook app on your Mac and import those icons into MO2. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.